which is interesting was you know cancel culture because Dulce Cabana are still getting featured on Vogue, which goes to show cancel culture is a bit of a myth, really, isn't it? Right? Remember the whole Dulce Cabana thing? Uh, they did that Chinese New Year celebration where they had the girl um, eating Italian food with chopsticks or some shit. Like, really, you know, a bit classless, a bit tasteless, a little bit, you know, whatever it may be. Um, um, cultural appropriation. I don't know, whatever you want to call these buzzwords, right? But it, it just tasteless, right? A bit tacky. Then Stefano Gabbana came out on social and just, you know, his usual, um, you know, snarky, you know, bit dickhead this self. And it seemed as if, like, you know, brands were cancelling it, loads of Chinese customers were burning their stuff, returning it, the stock was going down, they issued a public apology. But it seems like everything is all forgiven because no no matter who they call to go and run, walk their runway, it seems like no one really has any objection. They all kind of sign up, pay the, um, sign the contract, and, you know, and get paid and walk the runway. Um, again, which goes to show that I think cancel culture and fashion just hasn't seemed... I don't think it's really taken a hold. And I think it's a good thing, right? In general, I'm a real big, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, but I think it also goes to show what maybe the wider society should maybe take an example of. I think fashion people are maybe very aware that they're not, you know, no one is perfect. They're not all standing on some kind of moral superiority to others. I think the moment they try to cancel one person, they're afraid that they might then have the, you know, cannon pointing in their direction, which, you know, never to be happens in the wider world anyway, right? The moment someone is rabbiting on about one thing, you know, who's that recently? There was a really liberal journalist recently who was always espousing, you know, male feminist kind of POVs on Twitter who recently got nabbed for, you know, um, essentially um, trying to meet up with underage girls online, right? And, you know, and have and allegedly um, having a hard drive full of uh, child porn and stuff, right? So usually the people that are screaming the loudest, pointing lies are usually the ones that are hiding the most skeletons, usually, right? Not all the time. So I think some people in fashion are very aware that if they try to, you know, become the moral police and try and oust Dulce Gabbana from the fashion circuit, that eventually one of their favorite brands is going to fall by the wayside too, because no one's perfect. Um, but yeah, just, just interesting to see, just as an observation. Um, I'm not sure what this says about anybody. I'm not sure if it says in general fashion people are just, you know, way too about the actual clothes and being at the runway show in order to kind of really because i don't know what if what anyone would have to do to really give up their seat because someone else will take it from you in an instant it's sort of like you know when united fans debate that oh people should go and strike and give back their season ticket holders season tickets because my united are not investing right in their team and ed woodward is fucking up our club and the players don't care blah blah, blah. but the common you know re retort back is like yeah if you give up your season ticket for one of the biggest clubs in the world, there'll be a queue of people willing to take your seat, right? The same will be said for fashion, right? The moment you take the moral stance, you're not going to go to a Dolce Gabbana show. There's tons of people who don't give a fuck about all this social justice shit who are going to line up and take your front row seat, right? And some. Um, same with models. So, yeah, interesting. Um, this little article from Vogue, written by Luke Leach, again, highlighting some of the, you know, um, silhouettes that adorn the Dos Cabana runway. Nothing too extravagant, nothing too crazy. But I, do have, I have heard a couple people say on social that the suits supposedly fit amazing. Again, I've never touched a raw Dos Cabana piece in my life, so I don't know what they taste fit like, but I don't know. It's always the same shit on the runway. I never really get that excited for it. I think the one question I was super excited for it was a really, they do a lot, but the super heavy Catholicism one, the one where people, the guy would dress up like literally like priest, I thought that was nuts. I love that one. Uh, but for the most part, I've never really been that bothered about Dos Cabana. So, yeah. Um, interesting just to see, in general, just how the counterculture thing didn't work. They're, it looks like they stopped using influencers maybe on the runway too. They were having that period of time where they were getting all the influencers to walk on the runway. But I guess influencers are, you know, they have backbones of fucking Spanish. They have no backbone really. So, you know, they're not the first people to kind of stand up next to you and kind of, you know, um, ride with you during the stormy weather so they probably backed out of it and just got regular models in but again yeah never really been the biggest you know it's a bit too even for my liking it's a bit too gaudy like um but this will look great on a you'd wish more guys would wear something like this on a red carpet in it right you're definitely gonna see someone wear something like this. this is crazy it's like what is it? like a purple sequin blazer with is that leopard print lapels <laughs> and and the same kind of colored pants and loafers with massive bows on it. it looks essentially just dripping in wealth it's insane how good that looks but most most guys just got up for the standard white blazer black trousers sort of combo to go a little bit jazzy but that looks insane that's a great look some stylists should definitely pick up for someone of their actors and actresses 
whatever it may be. But yeah, um, I don't know what it says about Dolce Gabbana. I don't know, but it's interesting to see. Cancer culture doesn't necessarily work in fashion, does it? No one's really got cancer in fashion. Who? Terry Richardson, Bruce Weber, but I'm probably sure they're still working now in the background without having their names credited, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's about it, really, isn't it? No one has really got cancelled in fashion, really, the same way that they have in larger society. I wonder why that...